Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to our webinar today titled Unlock the Future of Your Legacy Application, a Risk-Free Pathway to Modernization. My name is Paul Schneider. I'm the Chief Sales Officer here at Elastiforce, and I'm so happy to see everybody here. Now, before we start, just a couple of housekeeping items. All attendees are on mute, so I'm sure you'll have questions. Please type those questions into the chat box, and we're going to answer them at the end of the presentation. If you have any technical issues, please type them in the chat as well, and I'll work to get them all handled with you. And just a reminder, the recording of this webinar will be available, and we'll send it to you in an email within the next 24 hours for you to be able to access. And if you like what you see today, and any of you happen to be attending the Alliance Conference here in Phoenix in March, come by and say hi. Alaska Forest is going to have a booth, booth number 325, so we'd love to see you. All right, so let me set the stage for this webinar. The Elastiforce team has been working in higher education for over 30 years. We know that there are so many legacy applications that institutions have. Some are mission critical. But even though groups want to update those applications, there are things holding them back. And we're going to address some of those today. As we all asked, of course, considered how we would help companies and higher ed institutions update these applications, we actually came across Todd and his company, Aspen ESS. And as you'll see, Aspen ESS has a very unique tool to help modernize applications in hours, not the months or sometimes even years that it would typically take. So in this webinar, we're going to continue to discuss issues that, that many groups face when considering modernizing their legacy applications. You'll see what Aspen ESS creates, serving as really the absolute best upgrade that you could ever hope for. And from that output that you're gonna get from Aspen ESS, your team can build out the GUI and all the input screens, or if you want a complete turnkey solution, you can even have Elastiforce do that for you. Either way, I think you'll see in today's webinar that we take the risk out of modernizing your legacy applications. And in fact, at the end of the webinar, we're going to provide a special offer that completely eliminates the risk for you if you want to learn more. So before we actually start, we're going to launch a quick poll, and we'd love to get your feedback on this question we have here. What are your main goals when considering an application modernizing or modernization project? So I'm going to have uh, our two speakers introduce themselves while you're entering that information in, and then we'll come and we'll answer that poll at the end. So with that, I want to turn it over to Todd Ingersoll, the founder and CEO of Aspen ESS, and Mike Dillon, the CEO of Elastiforce, to introduce themselves and start the webinar. Todd, the floor is yours. Thank you all for attending today. Super excited to have the opportunity to share a few details with us about who we are and what we do. Uh, so my name is Todd Ingersoll, founder of Aspen ESS, where we help IT leaders make their old software new again in five days or less. And it's awesome. Um, our leadership team uh, shares a combined experience of seven decades in the enterprise software and services space where we've worked at a variety of organizations covering product management, product development, business development, M&A activities, numerous successful um, transactions on both the, side, uh, the buy and sale side of uh, software companies, customer care uh, needs, et cetera, et cetera. And it was our time to take a look at who we are and what we've done and all the successes we've achieved individually in, smaller or in, in other organizations and realized rather than continue on that path, helping individual companies do really, really well, we wanted to help anybody do well wherever they've got software related needs. So hence the formation of Aspen ESS back in 2000, 2022. So I'm joined today by Mike Dillon, AKA Super Mike uh, of Elastiforce. Mike, a few words from you, please. Sure. So uh, Mike Dillon, CEO of Elastiforce. For those that uh, don't know me, and I know many of you do, um, I've worked in higher education industry for over 30 years. Uh, it's funny, uh, Todd mentioned seven decades in the space. I, I almost feel like it's seven decades, but uh, started out as a practitioner at UCLA and, and UC Berkeley, then as a software developer, then a consultant, and then spent most of my career leading a global consulting practice, implementing specialized solutions for higher education and in other industries. Um, 
very excited about today. Uh, I was with the company that I won't mention that had launched an app modernization solution uh, with the huge, huge investments and marketing efforts. Mm -hmm. It promised 80% plus automation. Unfortunately, it consistently fell short of that, uh, required lots of manual coding that wasn't planned. That's why I'm really impressed with the partnership with Aspen ESS. Their engine delivers on the promise of complete automation and then the sta and the standardization of the code. Really, truly unique offering here. So um, I hope you enjoy the presentation. I'm looking forward to getting the feedback from you. And I think we're gonna start off with the results from the poll. That's right. So I think everybody can see the poll on the screen, but the poll question again was, what are your main goals when considering an application modernization project? And we have a tie for the number one answer. Uh, the two top answers were improving our ability to keep pace with business requirements and lowering the amount of technical debt. Third, uh, the third answer that came in was making our business customers happy with new features and functionality. So thank you for your input. Todd, let me turn it over to you to start with your slides. All right, folks, let's run through some slides. Let's go. Slide, slide, slides. Here we go. Promise not a ton of slides today, but let's set the stage here. What is app modernization and specifically app modernization needs um, in and around legacy? applications, existing software that you've got. So as you stare at this list, you should recognize some or all of these things that might be applicable to products or solutions in your care, as it should be. Uh, top row of, in, uh, of items here generally or loosely fall into this category affectionately referred to as technical debt. Things that everybody probably has experienced in their careers, if you're in the software industry, one thing to recognize, technical debt is not any one person's fault. It's not any one group's fault. It's a natural thing that comes about with software. The other, the other half of that equation, though, is technical debt becomes everybody's problem. Everybody's problem. That's really what we're emphasizing here with respect to the amount of impacts that older software applications can have for an organization. And that's from an internal standpoint as well as an external standpoint. And when you think about that in its totality, this really is the reason for our existence as Aspen ESS, helping organizations overcome not just some of these pieces, but all of them, but all of them. And I, I, I I think it's important to point out that when we get to a point, and as we run through and show you some of the capabilities that we've got here in a few moments, where you land and when you're done, when we've overcome these challenges, this technical debt mountain that a lot of organizations are faced with, that's a moment in time. That that's a that's a, an opportunity to have some high fives. Oh, sorry, uh, some high fives and, and some celebrations in a hallway. But again, that's just a moment. The real goal with what we're trying to help organizations get to is restarting their businesses. Get back to the ability to start running quickly, start moving forward fast. You wanna start having conversations with analysts. You wanna get back in front of customers, confidently get back in front of customers. You who've been upset with you for a period of years, if you wanna start adding new features, if you wanna go after new markets, those are the opportunities we wanna help you present. But we've gotta get you past these things that are, that are preventing you from actually getting to that situation in the first place. So with that, Sorry, I got to click it looks like. Legacy app modernization. If it's that important, if it's that big of a deal, why isn't everybody doing this? Why isn't everybody doing this? Well, because it's hard. It usually takes a long time. It's usually a significantly larger, more complicated project than people ever give it, um, ever give it the understanding or, or the care and attention that it should be looked up as. So here's a couple of quotes back from an organization, Wakefield Research. You can see what these are all about. Um, you know, at the end of the day, a lot of the things that companies don't go into when they undertake app modernization projects themselves is a lot of these fail and a lot of these fail. Why do they fail? Well, people have been going about it either the harder way or the wrong way. Realistically, that's what that, that's what we're talking about here. So what is wrong with app modernization projects? Why do they fail? So historically, organizations have gone about approaching this from a variety of, of perspectives, one of which might be you're going to use your internal teams. That's challenging because those internal teams are gonna probably have other things that they need to be focusing on. So their capacity or their ability to focus isn't 100% on the task at hand. Maybe the knowledge base associated to help with modernization is not where it needs to be. 
et cetera, et cetera. You can see some of the other items listed here, but leveraging internal teams to get you off of that technical debt mountain, it's not easy and it's certainly not a guarantee uh, of success. Another item that has been heavily promoted in the industry for, I don't know, 10, 10 plus years now is the, the idea of cloud migrations. Just move it over to the cloud. Well, if all you effectively did was take old software, put it in the cloud, did you really accomplish the goal that you were trying to do in the first place? Did you get where you wanted to be? You're probably spending more in hosting costs and infrastructure and managed services now with old software sitting in a newer, uh, in a newer set of servers than maybe where you were in the first place. And at the end of the day, you still don't have the ability and the efficiency to do what you want to do with those mission critical applications simply because they moved from point A to point B. There's a bevy of these low code, no code platforms that are now out there and available uh, in, in this space. The keyword here being platform, I really appreciate the fact that Mike used the keyword engine of ours early on in, in his introduction. When you go look at these no code, low code platforms, please do not be confused by, by the simple fact that they're looking to lock you in to an ongoing continuous paid relationship with who they are and what they do. A lot of the service offerings they have uh, have phenomenal capabilities in these UI first, these top-down approaches to build new applications well and efficiently. But in thinking about how that applies to a legacy application, especially the data sets or the system integrations tied to what older software is tied into and, and, and how it needs to continue to operate from a continuity standpoint and a you do not want to lose your data. The two don't match. They're not a one-to-one -one match. These newer UIs, newer capabilities cannot connect to older databases. They do not immediately connect to older databases. So you're left with having to go through giant uh, ETL jobs to try and hopefully get most of your data out of the old database into this new data schema. And it's not a one-to-one -one mapping. A lot of times you do wind up having to strand or lose data in the process. That's not what you were setting out to do. A lot of these platforms also, you know, top priority in terms of how they built out these GUIs and these capabilities, they were not focused on testing quality assurance activities. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail here in terms of what consulting organizations also their approach to doing it, but these are some of the challenges that I hope you can appreciate. And this isn't me trying to point to the rest of the world and saying, they suck at what they do, they exist for a reason, but realistically this approach to helping legacy applications get to a modern state has been done wrong has been done wrong. Well, that leads us into us. Who are we? How is Aspen ESS different? Why do we make this claim that we can do this in five days or less? And why do we think we've got the right approach? Because this is our background. This is what we've been doing, managing products, solutions for, for a variety of companies. And, and we've had to live this life. We know what it's all about. This is in our DNA. So I'm gonna walk you quickly through from, from the bottom left. We're gonna go left to right real quick as we, we transition over a couple of pieces to help give you a mental picture of who we are and what we do. So the top column on the left over here where we're talking about app modernization, this right here right now is being spoken about as if we're talking about a single individual product and we wanna modernize that product. Um, I want you to recognize that it can be bigger than just one product, but we'll get to that in a moment. App migration next. Now we talked about vendors and being locked in other vendors platforms a moment ago. If you have already built software inside somebody's somebody else's platform. And you might be keenly interested in getting that software out of that and having it now be uniquely your own. Maybe it's just the license fees and working with some of those other platforms are, uh, are, are no longer palatable. That's a service we provide. Portfolio rationalization is this idea of taking uh, feature sets, functionality that lives in multiple products today. If there is desire or logical reason to have that feature functionality sitting in multiple products and help converge that, help harmonize that into a single or a smaller footprint of applications. I refer to that as portfolio rationalization, last but not least, new app development. We're not gonna go into too much detail here on that particular piece, but it's also something we can help out with. Nonetheless, regardless of which one of these four individual categorical areas that, that we specialize in, the process is the same. We know and understand and we cherish people's data. It's all about their data, the data as well as the data um, where system integrations are concerned. We need to make sure that from a bottom up standpoint, we first and foremost, we take those realities in, in, into consideration. So we work first with your database. We do not touch your data. We do not need to see your data. This is an important point. We only care about schema. 
schema, the structure of the database. So if you care to give us a backup of maybe a test database, that's helpful. If you don't want to do that, we can uh, offer you a, um, we can give to you our metadata miner, small console application. All it does is do an extraction of that schema and you get to look and verify that inside that file's output, that it's just schema, tables, fields, field types, relationship information. That's all we need to work with. We then feed that to our engine um, inside our own private cloud hosted portal. And then we produce all the results that we're gonna show you. So I'm not gonna go through what's listed here on top in terms of what we provide, what we what we produce. You can screenshot that if you'd like to. And the uh, the smash in the, uh, the color blue here, um, we're also gonna come back to that in terms of what you as webinar participants are possibly recipients of if you choose to move forward with us coming up soon. So instead of speaking to a slide, let's go look at something. Let me share something else for a moment. Da, 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 da. All right, so we are now, you should be looking at our cloud hosted portal. What this is, is our tool where we, so the services that we provide, we use this tooling. This is our tooling that we use to create your, the upgraded version, the best upgraded version of your product. So here in the administration area, simple, simply, uh, this is a demo for our sales demos. This is where we manage customer and application records themselves. But the meat, heart, and soul of what we do inside this portal, our customer, customer application portal, is we develop software. So again, we started with a schema, okay? And then we moved it through our engine, and this is what we produced. Now, for this demo, I'm leveraging a public database as provided by Microsoft, AdventureWorks 2022. If you've got Microsoft in your background, you've probably come across this database. And what did we do when we ran this last job most recently in 28 minutes? Let me show you. The produced outcome um, when we fire off a job and we, we, go, we go, go do work atop that empty schema is these six steps here over in this app generation uh, set of train stops over here. Just coincidentally, six is my lucky number. The first of which is where we, we create a new technical uh, an, uh, tech stack for you. Um, the next five items are all, all about CI CD. This is all DevOps, so all automated activities. Now we currently deploy up in, we operate and deploy up inside Azure today, but we don't have to do that inside uh, Azure. It could be with any cloud provider. If you wanted us to help do push deploys of a solution out to your hosting provider of choice. So what did we do? Uh, for a top the AdventureWorks database, the predominant repository is 284 C sharp files. A lot of the UI considerations, automation testing included, 138 JavaScript files, some CI CD pieces here from within Bicep, uh, some YAML files, just some basic configuration pieces that we need to take advantage of in the background. So, a little bit more specifically across those 429 files, 1,850 automated integration tests. I'll come back to that and show you that in a little bit more detail here in a moment. But of all those file types, over 98,000 lines of code. So let's go look at it Re briefly, but let me go show you this. So we, we commit things out to Git. So if we were working with you today, this would be a thing you could go look out. You, we, we provide you logins into this environment so you could verify and see everything that we've produced on your behalf. Um, APIs, both REST and GraphQL APIs. I'll show you a little bit more of that here in a second. Client information, uh, JavaScript clients used as both models, um, as well as part of how we um, intercept or, or excuse me, consume and work with that REST API to execute against those 1800 plus integration tests, deployment files, repository files, the meat of the actual working application itself. Here you can see from a model standpoint, entities and models uh, for each of the individual tables that sit behind us in that AdventureWorks database, test material, automation testing, all of this is automation testing pieces, and then unit tests, which uh, I'll show you where we take advantage of those here in a second. Let me jump back here into the summary pieces, our dashboard. So those unit tests, and I'm gonna specifically talk about this code coverage piece here, we intentionally use, if you've been in the software development game for a little while, you will recognize the name Sonar Cube, um, industry recognized, uh, one of the best code quality health check utilities that's out there in the space. We utilize intentionally this external tool to validate, you know, is our code quality good or not? 
So one thing I'll point out here quickly, you saw at the summary level back on my dashboard, but also here inside SonarCube, 58% coverage. Actually, we're using and writing all of those unit tests to only look at the repository, the core meat of the application fundamentals. And that's important. So unit test coverage against the repository itself is a lot closer to 88%. So again, if you've been in the software development game for a while, you'll know that north of 70, 75%, code coverage, you're, you're on a great path. And you also should recognize that the pursuit of 100% code coverage is, is very much a game of diminishing returns and, and actually can start to work against you in some cases. So a lot of unit test coverage here done for a very specific reason. Um, I'm gonna back out of Sonar Cube here in a second, but even from a, from, a, from a security or cybersecurity standpoint, you can see that we don't have anything to be, be concerned with with respect to the code that we've created. Now, I'm, I'm, I showed you a second ago that over inside um, SonarCube, we aren't using unit tests to look at code, code quality and code coverage um, material against anything other than just the repo. And that API layer is not specifically exercised therein. We do that by uh, through these automated integration tests. So 1,850 automation tests that our consumers, and that's where a lot of those JavaScript files come into play. Those are acting then as the entry point. So just like if someone's writing a UI and you were worried about um, penetration tests, cybersecurity tests, SQL injection activities as done through consumers of, of, of APIs, all of that automation testing is done directly against our REST API. 1,850, 100% of those are passing, both positive and negative testing. So that REST API, here it is. We publish out to Swagger. And just as a demonstration, let's pull back an individual record. Now I'm currently pointing against um, all of the, the, the real AdventureWorks database, not an empty one, it just demos better. But you can see here doing a get against ID of one, this address line of 1970 Napa Court, I was born in 1970, it's a little scary to say out loud, but you can see a quick pullback from within a REST API. We also produce a graph, a graph, a graph. So working with REST, you get the full package. So a little techie for just a moment. Working with graph, excuse me, wrong piece here. If you want a smaller package, you're doing UI development or mobile development, and you want to make sure your packages are just nailed down to the specific pieces or data elements that you require, satisfy the needs of whatever UI pieces, integration pieces that you're going through. We've also got graphs available to you as part of what we produce. So with that, let's jump back to slides. Maybe one thing. Come on, Zoom. Did we get it? Yes, we got it. So with that, let's transition then. Final piece I wanted to share with you, just as an FYI. So everything you saw moments ago is all back in, is all back in. Harden, quality assurance, uh, needs included automation tests across the board. From a front end development piece, this is just a screenshot from our dev environment. I have not yet ported this over to our sales demo environment, but UI. Here's a screenshot of UI that uh, is also um, very quickly going to be available in terms of our produced output. I refer to these as starter pages. More specifically, it's a starter application. This will be a full React application leveraging slightly modified uh, material UI components that are engineered to directly be consumers of our REST API. Zero code was written to produce what you're seeing here on the screen. Uh, it's just a natural working element of, of, of what working with our, our engine produces for you. So obviously a UI like this is going to introduce opportunities to fine tune things, to make them look like you want them to look, to maybe move fields around, build out pages that are much more unique to what your application needs to be. But I think it's important for us to make available to you to have that starter set from a UI standpoint as well. So top to bottom, the end goal from us, the end capability from us is to provide you with a working solution. Now that said, all those modifications and things you might wanna do from a UI development standpoint, also possibly from a custom business logic standpoint, adding in some of the specific things that your application needs that we can't do natively straight out of the box. 
If your existing team can't undertake that work on its own, that's where Last Force comes in. We've already gone through exercises. And then one of the reasons that we have this partnership today, it's a perfect handoff. They're perfectly equipped to do that specific work with you, for you, as you take on these applications and have this new product upgrade, uh, make it yours. So just to sum up from my standpoint, what do we provide you? The service that we offer, we are essentially providing you with the best version of an upgrade of your software that you could go through. So you get all the source code, you get all the automated unit and integration tests, supporting documentation uh, about how you might need to go through and be consumers of those APIs we produce, practical usage applications, things like that. How, you, how to get what we provide you once you pull it into your environment how to wire and swagger, playground, sonar cube, et cetera, et cetera. Um, also instructional pieces about custom business logic additions, which we specifically have engineered in the repository area, how you'd go about, where you'd go about doing that. Um, and then any UI uh, fine tuning or additional UI development. That's something that you wanna work with Elastiforce on. That's certainly, certainly something that we can help you do in terms of a handoff standpoint. So. With that, I'm going to wrap up in terms of what I was trying to share with you here today and hand this over to Super Mike. <laughs> Last of course, Mike, over to you, sir. Fantastic. Thank you. Thanks, Todd. And uh, obviously, what we try to do here is, is give you a real detailed transparency in what we do in terms of converting the app. You know, this is the gold standard when it talks about approach, validation, testing. Etc. And if you're functional and you sat through this, I guess uh, if you walk away with anything, just know that we're doing it appropriately and we're doing it the, the, the right way. And you're, you're the net result um, is that you're going to get a, this this modern app. And I want to say that if you've got legacy applications, you may feel as though um, because you, you may have web access, etc., that you have enough flexibility right now. And uh, so when you're evaluating the effort to rewrite the app. Or have your technical team, you know, rewrite it. it. It might seem unnecessary, and this might be in due in large part to the high costs and risks, given the functionality, uh, the given that it's it's working for you, it's functionally working for you. Um, what I want to point out, though, is that there's still a, a great deal of exposure to risk. Um, you may be losing resources that know it. Uh, you certainly probably over the years lost the core resources that developed it, and um, you may also have people that really don't know the history of the code. And so when they are trying to adapt it or extend it, they're writing on top of it, sort of a spaghetti code kind of mode. So over time, um, you've got people building code on top of code on top of code. What we're offering is the ability to standardize that code into a modern language and not only now have it just maintainable, but also easily extensible. And you might have thought over the years, things that you would like to either do differently or extensions of it, including now, you know, AI extensions, all these are now gonna be possible with the new application. And Todd, we can go. All right. So when we talk about our partnership, uh, we talk about the things that we can provide. Um, obviously a complete solution is not only the modernization of the code and the app, but also, a successful implementation of the new application. I want to first say customers may be fully capable of taking the new application with the delivered screens and carrying out the, the full implementation on their own. Um, and that's certainly we want you enabled and ability to do it. That that's uh, we're happy with that. But if you decide that you need support, Elastiforce can step in here, provide you with a tailored implementation uh, will provide you the support wherever you need it. So tactically, you could be looking at just little gaps in your implementation team or uh, parts of the project, and we're happy just to fill those areas. Although we do offer a full suite of services, and the the, the services can be as easy as I mentioned, tactical, where we you know can help you create some custom UI, develop some integrations. Um, but on the other side of the spectrum, we can provide a full set of implementation services where we work with you to develop all aspects of the project plan. Now, that includes, and sometimes overlooked, right, change management, right? This is still going to be a new app, and there's, there will be changes. 
So we can start with alignment of stakeholder expectations about the new app and then go all the way down to uh, the rest of change management with training and documentation as needed. And obviously we've been through and <laughs> lots and lots of implementations as I sure you have. And you know you can have the, one, the best application in the world, but if it isn't deployed correctly, uh, then the project isn't seen as a success. So um, user preparedness is by and far the most important thing. And years ago, I had a I had a project, and probably the the one that I like to point to most. We had a uh, go live event, and there was a business conference at the same time the go live event was going on. And most all the team left to that functional conference because they knew they were prepared for what that implementation was going to look like. And so it wasn't a huge concern. We want to make that a seamless implementation for you in this case as well, right? So um, happy to work with you in any way that makes sense. Uh, but certainly at the end, we want to make sure that the users are comfortable with the change. As you evaluate the project, really, really important to think of the changes and extensions to the application that you might have always wanted and you see, and it seemed too daunting, right? Um, now's the time to really think about those, make those things, those changes now before you're going to deploy the app. And then uh, as far as, as hosting, as Todd mentioned, you may have the app being hosted today. You may not. You may decide that this is the right time to have a new app hosted with managed services. Um, Elastiforce can provide that with uh, SOC 2 compliance. So we can provide the basically the full back end on the implementation and then hosting the managed services if that's something you uh, desire. Next slide. <clears throat> so uh, one, you know, I want to thank you for your time, right? It's precious. Uh, I'm hoping this was extremely valuable and I'm hoping that we have uh, follow up with you. Um, we're also, as Todd mentioned, um, there's a, there's a very special offer we're going to provide to you. Um, we're willing to take your legacy application, transform it onto the modern code base that's cloud enabled, although big important point, not cloud required. You can keep it on prem and we're going to do this all risk free. So if you've got an application you want to transform, let us go ahead and, and do the transformation, give you the a set of screens so that you can test it out before making any commitments. If you decide to move forward, great. You'll have a new application and an intuitive uh, user interface. Um, we can uh, uh, help you implement the solution or you can implement it on your own. Um, we'll do this all for free. So there's going to be no cost to you, no risk. And uh, frankly, you know, when I think about app modernization, when I think of most things, try before you buy is not one you see in software development. And that's exactly what we're going to offer to you. Um, Anyway, no, no, we ran through a lot of uh, information quickly. So I'm hoping that um, we get a follow up conversation with you. Um, it really is not going to get any better than this offer. And uh, I appreciate the time that you you've spent with us today. Um, we look forward to discussing your project and uh, look forward to feedback after this. And, and specifically, if there's things that you think we should have covered, I'd uh, love to hear from you as we do this uh, probably multiple times in the future. And um, with that, I want to think I want to turn it over to Paul and ask if he's got any final words for us. Great, Todd, if you can go to the next screen. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. Um, for all of our attendees, just to kind of go over what Mike had said, as you see on the screen, there is a special offer for everybody here on the webinar today. You can take advantage of our try before you buy offer, like Mike said, something very unique that you don't see out there too often. Uh, and in this offering, Aspen ESS will modernize your database schema and code, basically show you exactly what you'd get if you engage them. In addition, we'll provide you with screens to test out the application. We'll do all of this with no commitment from you. If you like what you see, you can move forward. Uh, if not, you can walk away with no commitment at all. In fact, if you do decide you wanna move forward, Aspen ESS is also gonna provide you with six months of updates in response to monthly code quality integration tests and cybersecurity scans. So you can truly see that this is a no risk offer uh, to really see what the possibilities can be when using this turnkey modernization service. So if you wanna discuss this, uh, this service any further, send me an email right there on your screen uh, and we'll go ahead and get a meeting scheduled.
So I'm gonna leave, we'll leave the screen up, uh, but let's open it up to some questions. We actually had some questions come in uh, and let me just run, let's see, the first one is, and I think we'll throw this to Todd, is, is this a low code or no code solution? Uh, I, no, um, it's not. So one of the things that I pointed out earlier, you know, no code, low code, they're vendor specific. Um, they're bespoke technology stacks. Usually, you know, for example, if we, we, we think, well, I'm not going to name names, but oftentimes you're in somebody else's IDE, which is a unique tool uh, in building out software in ways that, although it appears to be low code, no code, there's code in the background, but in order to use the functionality produced from within that, that GUI, those, those, those pieces themselves, it, it's still code. Now, what we are, we're an engine producing your software. You know, one of the things that I I take very seriously is I all of these organizations who've got legacy, legacy software, most of which still have teams of folks who are going to be taking this, you know, and it's it's they need to make it their own. They need to continue to have that, that application, those features, that functionality, and the preservation of all that data continue to, to live on. And only those folks who've been building, managing, maintaining those software products, or even pushing them off to a self and have been afraid to touch them, this is still an opportunity for you to own your own software, for you to manage your own destiny. So no, it's not a low code platform at all. We're, we're a service provider and we're just giving you the best upgraded version of that product that you haven't been able to get to and do yourselves for a variety of reasons. But that's who we are and that's who we, what we do. Great, we have two more here. Uh, Am I locked into using your per platform or service after we develop the software? Absolutely not. If you want to do a one and done, great. I understand that. I respect that. If you've only got the one application that you need to go through and then and, and go through this modernization exercise with, perfectly understandable. The goal, not the need, the goal, however, is for you to see how quickly we can produce phenomenal value for you. In addition to the, the quantity of things that we're doing, also it's the quality. Quality is, is job one. We want you to be successful and if we're not giving you a quality product, you can't be successful. So the goal is that you would turn around and say to yourselves, well, why don't we do this again? Why don't we do this again and continue to work with these guys? You know, And especially if you're a larger shop, you've got numerous products and the idea of that portfolio rationalization maybe caught your attention a little bit. You know, That's another thing that we can work with you on. And, and even run through and do additional demos, you know, again, stacks of your own, we build out whatever the appropriate schema is that needs to live underneath all that feature functionality that you're trying to converge. Um, that, that's our goal though, you know, we need to be so darn good and so darn quick and so darn reliable that you're, you're saying to yourself, why wouldn't we use these guys again? But obligation, absolutely not. I don't like vendor locks. I don't want to, I don't ever want to be in a vendor lock situation. I don't want to create that for anybody else. So no, you are not obligated to stay with us. That's it. Great. Uh, Mike, this last one is for you. Uh, does my, and, and you covered this, but maybe we can talk a little bit more. Uh, does my team have to build the user interface to the new application or can you do that? Yeah, we'd be more than happy to, to help you there. Um, obviously, we, we work with your team to spec it out and make sure that it's tailored to every, uh, to, the, to the users that you are especially most concerned about. But um, no, you, you, don't, you don't have to build it yourself. And uh, it's one of the many services that we'll offer as a part of the, the implementation suite of, of uh, services that we, we provide. So Great. Good, good question. Great. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, that concludes our webinar for today. You'll all be receiving an email with a recording within the next eh, 12 to 24 hours uh, as, soon as, we, uh, as soon as we get it back from Zoom. Uh, but again, if you are going to the Alliance Conference here in Phoenix, next month in March, please come by and say hi. Last of fourth, we're gonna have a booth, uh, number 325. We can also have Todd come join us as well uh, if you wanna talk to uh, the whole team. So thank you everybody for your time. Have a fantastic day. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. everyone. Appreciate your time.